Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am super excited today to share with you a haul from Sweetie Nail Supply. So I had actually placed this order back at the beginning of March. I had ordered this specifically because of the Mayo Peach Collection. So these are the items I purchased. It's gonna be kind of a mini haul. I got a glitter gel from Nail Bio, a new non-white top coat that I'm excited to try, the Jinbi liner, the Mile Peach Collection, as you can see I bought it on pre-order, and a set of marble polishes from Nail Bio or Doey. Now this collection was released I think right at the beginning of March, and when you order or you pre-order collections from Sweetie Nail Supply specifically, I don't know about other shops, but Sweetie Nail Supply at least gives you a discount. I think it's like 10% off when you pre-order. So if you're thinking about buying a collection and you're really considering it, I would definitely try to pre-order and save yourself some money. So here is the package. Now I did open it earlier just to make sure that everything was here. But let me go ahead and unpack things. This is the multi-liner. Everything's packaged up really nicely in bubble wrap separately. Here's the top coat, I believe, the marble set, the glitter, and what I'm most excited about, the peach set. Look at how cute the packaging is. Okie dokie. So here are all of the products, all unwrapped. And I am just going to go through each of these with you. I think I will start with the peach collection. That way I can show you some of these other fashion gels, these toppers, on top of the swatches for the peach collection. Okay, so here is this collection. As you can see here, it says Peach Peach. Mayo is the brand. I believe it's pronounced Mayo. It might be Mayo, I'm actually not sure. It comes in this nice decorative box. I don't think that you can get the box if you order later. I do believe sometimes with Sweetie Nail Supply, with Zillaboo, they run out of the actual boxes and the fancy packaging for the full collection if you buy it at a later date. That's another benefit of ordering early on or pre-ordering. So here's the swatch card where you can put all of the different shades. It does not come with like the little uh, swatch glass beads or acrylic beads, but I do have some that I purchased for the sake of doing these swatches. And here are all the colors. Let me pull them out one at a time. Here's the packaging. I like that the lid shows the color, so right off the bat, you know what color you're reaching for. And it's got this cute little peach design. It is shiny. It's like a silver. The color is on the bottom. And your information is on the back. Let's see, where do I want to start? Maybe we'll just start with the white because I want to save this one for last. If this is what I think it is, number eight, this one is like a really fun, fuzzy peach color. So I want to save this topper for last. Okay, so here is number one. And I'm pretty sure this is just like a, a syrupy white color. All of these have a syrup finish, so they will have that slight transparency to them. But this is like a really nice syrupy white. It almost is like a warm toned white. It has the very faintest tint of pink to it, especially when it's really concentrated here, like it is on the brush and in the bottle. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's just ever, ever, ever so slightly pink. Not to the point where it's noticeable at all, but I assume it's done that way so it will mesh well with the other colors in the collection that are very warm toned. So let me go ahead and swatch this. I have never used Mayo polishes before. This is actually my first time. Maybe it's Mayo. I probably should have looked that up, but I'm excited to see how they perform. So far, it's very nice and creamy. It's going on well. It's not a super thin formula. It is a little bit thicker but I have a good feeling that will mean that the color will lay on evenly. That's one coat there. Really nice milky white. Let me let it settle for a few seconds, see how it evens out. 
So far though, I'm really liking the consistency. It's self-leveling down to a really nice even coat of color. Yeah, I like that. And it's a, it's a good white too. So there's one coat. I do see some transparent spots up by where the nail bends, which is usually a place where you will see some transparency, some streakiness is on the curve of the nail. So let me see what two coats looks like. There we go, coat number two. Whoops, cat hair. And coat number two seems to just even that right out. So that is color number one. Okay, up next is number two. And this looks like it's a light blush pink. Let's see here. It's just a nice, soft, baby pink. The bottle made me think it might be a little bit more cool toned than it is, but it is quite a warm toned pink. I would say it's like a perfect ballerina pink. You could almost use this as a nude too, like a pinky nude. Okay, this one is even more sheer, I would say, than the white one. Which I don't mind. Again, this is a syrup gel, so it is meant to have some transparency to it. It's not meant to be fully opaque. So I don't mind sheerness. So that's one coat. Okay, and there's coat number two. I would say these are definitely like two coat polishes. You could do one really, really thin initial coat if you want a super sheer look, but if you want nice even coverage, I would say go for two coats. Very pretty. Next up, we have number three, which I think is another light pink color, but this one should be more of a peach tone. Yes, this is definitely a little bit deeper and a little bit more peachy. And when I look at this peach collection, I'm thinking like Asian peaches. If you haven't had a white peach before, they are my favorite. The flesh on the inside, instead of being yellow and red, it's like a really nice white, pink, red set of tones. And it's super sweet. So here is number three in the swatch. So let me show you what one like super thin coat would look like, just out of curiosity. There we go. That's one really, really thin coat. So let me just add a little bit more for this first coat. Okay, so that's one fairly thick coat. Let me let it level and then I'll show you. Again, a little bit of transparency around the curve of the nail, but that's usually where you're gonna run into issues. Okay, and here's coat number two. And this I would say would be a really nice pinky nude color. Even outside of the peach collection, it would be like the perfect peachy nude. So here are these two colors compared. This one's a bit more of like a cool toned pink. This one is warmer. Now for number four. This should be a much deeper peach shade. Excited for this one. Ooh, yeah, this is like a, an almost orangey color. And this one seems to be less transparent than the others. Like already on the brush, I'm seeing more color payoff, but it is like the perfect, almost corally color. It's quite orangey in the bottle, but on the nail, it's a little bit more pink. That's number four. And I will let this settle a little bit. Okay, and let's see what coat number two looks like. The one thing I do like about these syrup polishes is how buildable they are. So if you want like a super sheer look, you can easily achieve that. But if you don't want a sheer look, you can just build up the coverage with multiple coats. Very pretty. I do really like this color. Now that's out of the bottle and on the nail. It's like a perfect corally peachy color. And number five looks like it should be another deeper color, but this one looks slightly more cool toned, a little bit more pink. Ooh, yeah, this is a really pretty shade. It's like a nice warm pink color. Very pretty. But here is one coat. Very pretty. I do really like this color. So here is coat number two of this color. 
yes very nice i really like this color it's so edible looking like it looks like candy watermelon sour patch candies absolute favorite i used to get them all the time when i would go to movies that was my go-to what is your favorite candy let me know down in the comments below and that is two coats very very nice really liking the consistency of these polishes so far on to number six and we are back in a more warm tone Ooh, okay very similar to the last one but again slightly more warm toned a little bit deeper too it looks like so here's one coat of number six this one's quite sheer actually I don't know if it's just me, it seems even more jelly-like than the last couple. And maybe that's on purpose. Perhaps some of these colors that are like similar but have different transparencies are meant to be that way. But let me see if I can lay this on a little bit thicker to get more color. All right, so there's one coat of that one. So let's go in for coat number two. I wanna see how much color I can build up with this one. So here are two coats of this color. Let me compare it to the last one. The camera isn't picking it up great, but this one's definitely a bit more warm tone, a little bit more transparent. So I might actually lay down three colors and see what that looks like. So that is a third coat. Definitely more coverage here. This one is the darkest of the shade range. So it's number seven. And this is a really nice and vibrant jelly pink. It's almost like a red. This is kind of the color that would be in the very center of the peach, the part next to the pit that has the most color, the most vibrancy. Again, just so edible looking. It looks like raspberry syrup. This set is really making me want desserts. Luckily, I have some cookies that I can pop in the oven later. So there's that one. Just one coat. Let me go ahead and pop this in. We'll do two coats. I feel like this one definitely needs at least two coats. And that's two coats. It looks almost orange with my glove under it, but with a white background, it's definitely more of a pink. Very nice. Let me cure this. And out of curiosity, I'm just going to do one more because it does still have that slight unevenness by the edge. And there's three coats. So here are the swatches, all of the color swatches for this collection. As you can see, it's a bunch of really fun summery pink shades, springy pink shades. We've got the nice white that is slightly pink toned to go with the rest of the collection. I think my favorites have to be this color, this like pinky nude, this vibrant pink. Maybe like this really light baby pink and this white. These two, again, would be like really nice light nudes. And this one is almost like a really nice deeper nude for people who have maybe a bit of a deeper skin tone. Now, I saved the best for last. The real reason I got this collection was for this one here. So this is number eight. And this is a peach fuzz topper. So it is this clear topper that has all of these little fuzzy particles. I don't know if you can really see too well on camera in the bottle, but it's got these fuzzy pink particles that are meant to look like peach fuzz. So I'm gonna go with the lightest swatch here so that you can see the details really well and I will show you what this looks like. Oh, that's so cute. It has those little like flocking particles, I think is what they're called. They're just little fuzzy pieces. And then these like little dots of pink as well. And this you can kind of like manipulate how you want. If you want the fuzz to go in different directions you probably want to apply it kind of like a soft gel like this by dragging back and forth if you want all of the particles to face in one direction seems like swiping like this is going to get you particles that all kind of face in a consistent direction 
first maybe dabbing it on like this, moving it around like a soft gel. It's going to help you disperse those particles in a more organic way, if that makes sense. I'm trying to get all these little fuzzy lines to go in different directions. So that's why I'm laying it on kind of like this. Isn't that so cute? I love that so much. I think that's adorable. It makes for a really nice, realistic, peachy look. Let's try this. So I'm gonna do one more swatch. I think I'm gonna do, let me do a little blend. Let's see here, see how well these blend together. That was so, so easy to blend. Okay, actually, I really love blending these colors together. That is so nice. Look at that. It's just a couple strokes, and it's just almost this like perfect blend. Let's do one more layer. And there we go. And then on top of that, I'm just gonna put that peach fuzz. And the nice thing about this fuzz is if you do get some lint in it, um, nobody would probably be able to tell. And then I'm gonna top all of that off with the Enel Couture Velvet Matte Top Coat. And look at how absolutely adorable that is. I love this. Oh my gosh. Look at it. It's like perfect peach skin, especially with that matte top coat on it. That's too cute. So adorable. And to make it even more realistic, I can use one of the other, other products that I got. So this is the Jinbi Ivy Multiliner Non-Wipe. I love this brand in terms of their top coat. So I have the Jinbi Crazy Thick Top Coat and I use it for everything when it comes to 3D nail art. It's a really nice thick consistency non-wipe top coat that will do 3D swirls really nicely. I use it to go around like gemstones to seal them in and make sure that nothing gets caught underneath sharp edges. So I wanted to pick up this because it's supposed to be their same non-wipe top coat but the bottle itself comes with an actual liner brush it's a really skinny brush here it's not your typical applicator so you are supposed to be able to just use this to go around gemstones paint on chrome details too that's one thing i'm really excited to try this out with is doing chrome details it's not the normal thick consistency of say the Jinbi Crazy Thick Top Coat. This is more of like a standard thickness, so it is going to move around a little bit, but not too much. Like I can, I can pull up a bead and it's staying in place pretty well on the brush. Only a little bit of drooping. So let me see if I can just take a dollop of this and do like little water droplets on this nail here. Very cute. And they're holding their shape really well. I do actually want them to flatten just a little bit. Let's see if I can spread them out slightly. Okay. That's what it looks like. Let me cure it. So yeah, this should be really good for going around your rhinestones just as a last step. I like it because I don't have to then pull out a liner brush and get gel on it and have to clean it and whatnot. It's just a nice contained bottle of gel, non-wipe, which is really important for finishing touches. They can use to, again, go around your rhinestones or even do chrome detailing. Oh, and that's what it looks like on the little peach nail. I love this. Honestly, I might do a whole set of just 
this pattern, like a nice ombre of the colors with the peach fuzz and these little water droplets. Again, because it's non-white, there's no tacky layer to it at all. You just plop it on and you are good to go, which is why I love non-wipe thick gels for those 3D designs. Because now I don't have to do anything to this. It is just ready. And it's so, so adorable. Very cool. All right, up next, I got a few products from Doey. If you've watched some of my other hauls, I do really like this brand. Um, it is by the creator Nail Bio. I've been following her on Instagram for a while and she's come out with her own line of Korean polishes. So I got the Marbly set. This is supposed to be a marble polish or a marble liquid. And then um, I'm not sure exactly what is in it, but it is a thinner so that you can use the alcohol ink and thin it out with this product. You probably could just use alcohol or acetone. This comes in a set though. So I went ahead and picked up both and I got a glitter gel. So let me go ahead and swatch this one first. I'll just put it on top of one of these swatches here. I like the bottle. It has the little shimmers on it so that you know it's a glitter. And the color is dress. Here's what dress looks like in the bottle. It's a clear topper with iridescent shimmer flakes. I love a flake polish, a flake topper. I'm a huge fan of glitter flakes versus just like rounded or hexagonal sequins. I think the variety in shapes just makes the polish look so much nicer. So let's go ahead and swatch this. Very nice. It is very full of flakes. It is a thicker consistency, so you can go ahead and move around those flakes where you want them. Very cute. I will say it is quite thick with glitter, so if you're looking for a more subtle glitter polish, this is not it. You are going to get quite a bit of glitter with this, which is nice. Typically that's what you want. You want a nice chunky glitter. You don't want the glitter particles to be too sparse or else you have to do too many layers and bolt to the nail. Okay, so that's what it looks like on a nail. It does have a tacky layer, so just be warned that it is a topper, but not a non-wipe top coat. It is going to have some tackiness to it that you'll just have to wipe off with a little bit of alcohol and a swab. Alrighty, and then the one last thing to swatch is going to be these marble gels, or I guess it's, I think it's just like an alcohol ink. So let me use this color here. I'm gonna start with the marbly liquid. It does look like it separates a bit in the packaging, so I'm gonna give this a good shake. Here's what it looks like. It's very, very thin. It's quite an opaque white, it looks like, which is good for marbling liquid. So let me lay this down here. We'll let it disperse a little bit, dry out a little bit, and then we'll see how this works for moving around the marbling liquid. So far, it's very nice. It gives that effect on the edge where the color is more concentrated because you have the paint running to the edges of the nail, pooling there, drying where the pigment is thickest. Okay, and then let's see how this works with the marbling liquid. Okay, yeah. So if you wanted to change the design a little bit, you wanted to clear out some areas, move the liquid around, this stuff definitely will do the trick. Just kind of scrub where you want to disperse those harsh edges. Okay, very interesting. I haven't worked with marbling gels or paints too much, but I'm excited to try. So here's the design that I came up with using these new polishes. I am going to take you through the process of how I make this realistic peach and peach blossom set. I use the Mild Peach Collection for the peach ombre and the marble gel or marble liquid for the little flowers. So here I am just picking out exactly which polishes I want to use. I believe I go with number one two, four, five 
and seven that deeper pink color the tips that i'm using are just the mccart almond shape tips the pump up ones specifically somebody asked me in my last video which ones i use these ones i like because they are quite sturdy again you want to get the pump up tips and not their regular acrylic tips the pump up i believe are supposed to be made with the pmma material whereas the regular tips are just the common acrylic i am laying down a base coat of number two this is just to have a surface to paint the flowers on and kind of a background to make those peachy colors really pop on that ombre nail so while i am laying down these colors i just wanted to say thank you so so much to everybody who has subscribed i recently hit a thousand subscribers which is just crazy to me because i think i was at maybe 200 in february when i really started posting more content consistently so over the last couple months i feel like my channel has really grown and i'm so excited to be meeting so many new people honestly just the most genuine kind individuals here in this nail art community i'm definitely somebody with major imposter syndrome so i really didn't think i would hit a thousand as soon as i did even though my boyfriend has really been talking my channel up and telling me oh you know it'll be soon when you hit a thousand when you get partnership he was very sweet he actually bought me a cake and some balloons for hitting 1000 and we had like a little celebration of our own last night um i did want to celebrate with all of the people who genuinely watch my videos though so if you're still here thank you so much i am actually going to be doing a silent giveaway so what i mean by that is this is going to be my only announcement of this giveaway on this video here I want this to be for somebody who genuinely enjoys my content and who stops by and watches my videos, which is why I kind of put the announcement here in the middle of the video and I'm not really going to be like announcing in the title or anything, but I thought I would actually give away a set of press-ons in this peach design here. So if you like this design, if you would like to enter and you are one of my subscribers, please in the comments put a peach emoji along with two flower emojis. So I'll put up an example here of what it should look like. It can be anywhere in your comment. You can do a separate comment or just add it to something that you already wanted to say, but it should be peach emoji followed by two flower emojis. That way, again, it's just for somebody who, you know, stops by, who's already watching my video and happened to hear about the giveaway. I will keep this open for probably like two weeks, especially since I don't have a ton of time on my hands right now, but I'll keep it open for two weeks. I will pick a winner, not next weekend, but the weekend after, and I will then announce the winner on my community tab. I'll make sure to tag whoever does win, and they will just need to email me their nail sizes, and I will go ahead and make them their custom set and get that sent out to them. So. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was just maybe something a little bit different. I know I have a lot of watchers who do their own nails and could use nail supplies, but I also know that I have quite a few watchers who don't necessarily do their own nails. So I wanted to offer a giveaway for something that potentially everybody could use. I really appreciate all of the support. I don't really have real life friends who do their own nails. So I really started this channel to share my passion and hopefully meet some other people who love nail art and who I could talk about designs and trends and products with. And I have honestly had such a great time so far building this little community on my channel and also joining other communities on other nail channels. It's just really helped me get back into my artistic side because I felt like for a while there, I was just so, so, so focused on work and really i would just work spend time with my partner occasionally game with some friends go to sleep and then do it all over again but this has really given me something to express my creative side with so thank you so much again um enough of that though let me get back to this design here i have basically finished the ombre at this point i'm just going in and blending together a number of the different colors from that peach collection the nice thing about buying collections like this is all of the colors are really meant to go together so they do tend to perform well these all blended super nicely i was able to layer them over each other wet and then i'm actually going to use that marbling liquid to try a flower design 
Now, I've never done this before. I haven't really worked with marbling liquids, so there's definitely a bit of a learning curve. The flowers don't come out exactly how I wanted them. Um, there are some things I would change just slightly for future attempts at this design, but overall I'm pleased. I just take a little dot of that marbling liquid and I create each petal individually, let it dry, and then I layer over some of the more translucent gels to give just a hint of color. Again, the nice thing about syrup gels is that you can really build up the opacity of the color and choose how much you want. With this design where you have that white background, these syrup pinks are perfect because you can choose to concentrate it more in the center of the flower and have more of a lighter tint around the edges. I think one thing I would do differently if I make this design again is painting on a matte surface. All I did was wipe off the tacky layer of the base coat gel and it had sort of a matte finish so I thought that would be good enough for these alcohol inks but they did kind of move a little bit more than I would have liked so I think next time I will paint on a matte top coat of some sort or like a buffed surface just to make sure that those alcohol inks stay where I want them to. Another thing that I will do differently next time is I had gone in and tried to do a second layer of flowers, but wherever I was applying that alcohol ink over the gel that I laid down, because the gel had that sticky layer, the ink was running everywhere. So I do think you need to put a really, really thin layer of maybe like a base gel in between your layers of marble ink or alcohol ink. But that's only if you're laying on top of that a translucent gel color like I did for this method here, just because you don't want that sticky layer interfering with your next layer of alcohol ink. You can try to wipe away the sticky layer. However, when I did that, I was noticing I was wiping away some of the actual marbling design because alcohol, acetone, those kind of gel cleaners, they will clean off this liquid as well. That's why it's kind of nice to use is it's very forgiving if you make a mistake you just wipe it away and start over so i thought i would bring in some of those other more peachy tones into the other layers of flowers just to bring the whole set together and make it feel cohesive the brush that i'm using is one from a previous haul this one i actually got from zillaboo i believe it is the myth Mellow signature art brush and it's great for these larger detailed areas. I'm just wiping off the excess polish and kind of layering the different colors, blending them together just to see what looks good. This isn't my normal 3D nail art style, but I do really like kind of the painterly nature of it, the realistic look. I actually used to do traditional art. By that, I mean drawing and painting with pencils and paints and then i had switched to digital art in about 2013. i actually have an old youtube channel it's linked on my channel page here where i used to upload speed paints of my portrait art um i did that for a while it just i lost interest in it because a portrait would take me hours and hours and hours to complete we're talking like 20 plus hours and i i just didn't have the patience and i also got really busy so nail art has been a really great way for me to reconnect with that more artistic side. So yeah, I love the realistic effect that these nails in particular have over kind of the more cartoony abstract designs that I usually go for. So here is where I learned my mistake about painting layers on top of the already placed alcohol ink. So I go in with a really, really thin layer of base coat that way I can layer on more marbling liquid and more gels on top of the already placed design and I won't disturb any of it. Since this is my first time really working with alcohol inks with marbling liquid, it was a little bit of trial and error to get used to how it worked. If you have any tips, I would love to hear them. This medium looks like it would be really easy to use, but I think it's one of those that on the surface, it seems like it might be simple, but there's a lot of technique involved. So yeah, if you have any tips on marbling liquid, I would love to hear them. I was actually thinking about making a Discord server for my nail community. 
just a place where people could go and share different design ideas, different tips and tricks, if there are sales for well-known brands, that sort of thing. So if a Discord server would interest you all, let me know and I will definitely work on getting that up and running and invite everybody here. So now I'm going in with the peach fuzz topper. I love the way that this looks. It just adds that last little bit of realism with the little fuzzy particles. I did learn something though. You really need to be careful when laying this down. I would say you probably want to lay it down in a fairly thick coat and then let it sit before curing. I was going in and I was trying to push those little flocking particles to where I wanted them to be and I think in doing so I had actually disturbed some of them to the point where they were kind of sticking out of the gel. I didn't realize that and I went ahead and cured right away and it meant that I had like some of the little hairy bits sticking out of the actual nail. So just make sure you let that set before you cure it and kind of let those particles relax back into the gel. Here I'm just going in with a white paint. I thought the flower nails looked a little bit plain for my liking so I just added some simple little stamen here in a white gel paint. I'm using my favorite leaf gel long liner brush. For me, sometimes it's just the smallest extra details that I think really bring together a set. These are just a few white lines, but in my opinion, I think it really completes the design of this nail in particular. In hindsight, I also think I might like maybe some gold outlines or just some little gold details. And maybe I will do that for the giveaway for that set. Do some little chrome stems or branches or something. I just think some gold might look nice here. So now all of the nail art is done. I'm going to top everything with a matte top coat. Here I'm just using the Enail Couture Velvet Matte Top Coat. I do like it, but be warned that when it does cure, it doesn't exactly have a sticky layer, but I would not recommend it for chrome. Again, it's not like it has like a sticky layer that you're supposed to wipe away, but I've used it and tried to isolate chrome designs with it and the chrome sticks really badly. So I don't recommend it for chrome designs, but as an overall matte top coat, it is nice. And now I'm just going in and adding those little dew drops. I was going for like really juicy peach look here. Something fresh, something very springy. And I did it on the peach nails and thought I wanted to carry that element over into the flower nails. So I just added really tiny little dew drops. You can't honestly really see them too much on camera. I think it definitely looks better in person. But this is one of those designs that's simple on the surface, but I think when you start to look closer, you start seeing how many details there are. And I do like that kind of look. So here is the finished design. Again, if you would like to win a custom set of these for my silent 1000 subscriber giveaway, please go into the comments and put in your comment a peach emoji followed by two flowers. I do ask that you don't really like mention the giveaway in the comments because I do want this to be for people who actually watch my videos and who just end up seeing the giveaway. But yeah, I will go ahead and pull somebody at random in about two weeks and reach out. So here are all the products that I ordered this time around from Sweetie Nail Supply. I'm just laying them out with all the swatches so I can get a thumbnail. Overall, I really did like the Mayo Peach Collection. I do think some of the colors are just slightly redundant. Um, if you are going to order them separately, the colors that is, I think that you could get away with skipping out on at least two of the polishes. For me though, I wanted to get the whole collection so that I could review it together. Especially that lovely fuzzy topper. I did not get to try the top coat here. This is the one from D-Gel, but I've heard great things about it. The Gin B liner was super handy since it has that nice thin brush in it. and. 
I really liked the marbling liquid. So overall, I would say a pretty successful haul. Thank you again so much to everyone who is watching. Please subscribe if you like my content and would like to see more, and I will see you all next time. Thank you. Bye.